free college, free health care, and a thousand dollars a week untaxed. True. I mean, that's cool. But what happens if I die? I need to take my cut. I mean, then your cut, you your cut go to other black people. What the fuck? No, 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 no. <laughs> I need my people. cut to go to my family. Regardless. They got their own thousands. This is, this is why we gotta put. They, they still need my end. This is why we gotta make. We gotta normalize right but now. No, I, I would say this though: the, the free health care, the free education, that's just cool. Black people always already tried to emulate that type, that type of shit anyway, and you got it on the back end in a different type of ways with uh, public aid and things of that nature. I don't want that shit. I want my money and I want the land for cheap. Okay? And I don't want to be taxed for 400 years. As long as you cut my niggas in chains, that's how long I want to be tax free. I don't want to pay no taxes. I want my land and I want my change. That's it. I, you, I don't want nobody to tell me what I want to do with it. But I mean, I think most people be fine with $1,000 a week for the rest of your mean? life. I feel like for the, for people the rest who, of your life. No. Like- but it has to be really disappointing for you to, to to be right there on the one yard line and having the votes lined up and the black caucus back out at the last second because of the threat of a veto from the governor, which you never heard directly. They didn't want to, they stopped all progress on that bill. They didn't want it, they didn't want it voted on off the possibility that Gavin Newsom was gonna, wasn't gonna agree to it, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm asking y'all this: uh, Is it was that a, was that the right call? Do y'all think it's the right thing to do to pull uh, pull some sort of like potential legislation because you think the governor is gonna just veto it? I mean, you still, I mean, you still gotta shoot your shot, right? Yeah, why, why the fuck? I mean, mind you, you can always come back. Back, like, yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, and, yeah. Tra- and with a ratified or like a change. Yeah. You know? What do you mean? I gotta shoot my shot. <laughs> you don't know if you need to be no shoot. Welcome back to the Chicago Black Delegation Podcast, everybody. Um, here we have another episode uh, regarding the current fight for reparations. Uh, this time is going to come from the Congressional Black Caucus over in California. So there's uh, been a lot that's been happening and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys this question. It's a little bit, this is one might be a little bit tricky. So we all, uh, I think when most people think of like reparations, they think of it as a federal uh decision like a federal uh push uh, some that some needs to be happening throughout the nation right um but california has like taken the matters in its own hands and they wanted to um how do i put this they want to uh push reparations sooner because they believe it'll be it'll happen easier in cal in uh in a state like california as opposed to having it uh, having to be a nationwide push so I mean, I, I'm gonna ask y'all this: Do you think that it's a good thing for states to individually implement or fight for reparations, or should we all uh, find a way to band together and uh, deliver some sort of a nationwide reparations package for uh, uh, Americans descended of freedom? I mean, I can see both uh, because each state had their own uh, set of racism and things they went through. Every state wasn't as harsh as every, you know, like Texas wasn't as bad as, I mean, Texas was worse than California. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So I can see you doing statewide where you can, you know, because you, this would happen in your state, you can probably get a little bit more versus trying to do it vast to everybody because a lot of places black people didn't go live, like Utah. It's not a lot of black people like really migrated to Utah, but they are black <laughs> people that live in Utah and probably have experienced racism and Jim Crow, those things of that nature. But it's probably just a, such a small population. You know what I'm saying? It may be different when you go to large places where black people migrated and lived and during those slave times. You may have a better argument for your reparations because your people are descended from that land. I think uh, I think you, you definitely... I How do I put this? Before I say anything, you definitely saved... Not saved. I don't want to say saved because you still, you still said... What you said still makes sense. The only thing I'm gonna say is, um, what you said regarding uh, a better argument that definitely like yeah. is like 
But let's definitely stick with that for right now. I mean, we did, you you would definitely pose a better argument had you uh, had uh, uh, we like argue for reparations in the state that has like a, a surmountable uh, like that has a, has a pretty uh, high number of black people in it. Yeah. So, but uh, what I do want to say is uh, most people, uh, well, reparations, right? People that argue for reparations will argue that um, every state in America, that every state that America puts this uh, flag on. Well, uh, actually benefited from re uh, from reparations, and I mean, actually benefited from slavery. You know what I'm saying? Benefited from the uh, the free labor, uh, you know, um, uh, procured from the South uh, during you know. I mean, slavery. yeah, you're right to a certain extent, but there, that's the reason why the North and the South war kind of happened because the North wasn't getting their proper cut. Yeah, the South was way better and more running with more way more money coming through, so the North was getting the short end of the stick. So that's why I'm saying it's a little different. No, no. So, so yeah. So, and what the North did, what when the when the North won a civil war, they yeah. took those funds and they expanded. They used that fund to expand to the West. So, like, arguably, uh, I think a lot of us are trying to say that hey, without slave labor, uh, we probably wouldn't even gotten as far in America as we uh, as we have. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of what we uh, that's kind of what we uh, what what they are what they will argue. You know what I mean? Uh, what do you think, Conjure? Uh What do you think? Um, do you think it's a good idea for states to individually fight for or fight for reparations, or do you think we should just save it as like some kind of nationwide push? I think a nationwide push. I think I believe a nationwide push would be more effective because you have a collection of black people from different areas pushing for the same goal. Mm. But to uh, King' the detriment, he probably is right because there's a certain number of black people per state. And then I've worked out west, Utah, stuff like this. The number of black people out there is not as strong as it is here. Okay. And that's even to say those black people out even that way are even, or like you said, descendants of free men. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Jay, you got an answer? You said I have an answer. Yeah, you do. I mean, yeah, like, uh, do you think we should push forward? Uh, you think it's good for us to be working towards state? Uh, state reparations as opposed to federal reparations <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie man these guys pretty much took the answers right there like uh, nationwide I mean who's to say that would be good for the you know saying a lot maybe state would be better you know yeah. but I mean I so I, I think um, I like the idea of, an, of a federal uh, reparations uh, push um unfortunately it's just a lot uh we didn't you know i don't think it's enough i definitely don't think it's enough people that's gonna be supporting reparations amongst the uh, house representatives that represent the country and uh and state senators it's kind of that's kind of an unfortunate uh reality of it um but like then like so reparations about state is uh more likely to happen especially when you kind of look at the numbers uh, of like Democrats as opposed to Republicans uh, within these uh, states, like uh, we gonna find, like, we'll find out a little bit later uh, in this video that there's way more uh, Democratic uh, um, states, uh, state senators and I mean you know representatives rather in California, political representatives in California um, than than our Republicans and like the Democrats are the typically the ones that's gonna be supportive of reparations more so than Republicans, and then the Democrats that vote, I mean, the Democrats, uh, the Democratic civilians that vote for these people are expecting, okay, them to make these, uh, make these type of decisions, or vote for these type of decisions, but, I mean, here we got some, and, and unless we get surprised, like, a situation like this, so, let's take a look at uh, what Roland Martin uncovered from, um, from Stephen Bradford, who, like, uh, who has a very dominant voice, a very, um, um, a very high position within uh he was a state senator that's all i'm trying to say uh, stephen bradford a state senator of uh of california uh he had quite a bit to uncover regarding uh what happened with hr 40 and the california reparations bill and um yeah so let's check it out it clear you had the votes what happened um I got noticed when I was in Chicago uh, two weeks ago at the Democratic National Convention by Chair Lori Wilson of the Black Caucus. I'm the vice chair. She pulled me to the side while I was in Chicago and she says, hey, um, we've heard word that the administration might have problems with 1403. That was the only bill that we heard 
1403. Again, that was the foundation for standing up the agency. And I said, oh, that's news to me. No one from the administration has contacted me. I said, what might be some of those concerns? And she wasn't specific. And so I did what I naturally would have done. I picked up the phone. I called my chief of staff. I called my life's director and asked them were they aware of any of those issues. And they said no. And upon my return on Friday, we staff, I called my life's director. And I contacted me. I says, what might be some of those concerns? And she wasn't specific. And so I did what I naturally would have done. I picked up the phone. I called my chief of staff. I called my life's director and asked them, were they aware of any of those issues? And they said no. And upon my return on Friday, we had a Zoom meeting with the director of finance, uh, for the state of California. And uh, he explained what those concerns were. Uh, Joe Steppenshaw, Steppenshaw, who's a stand-up guy, and he just said, hey, uh, Mr. Bradford, under these tough uh, budgetary deficit year, we, we have some problems with standing up the agency and we just have concerns. Not, no time did they say they were gonna veto the bill. They just said we had some concerns and they were gonna offer up some amendments. He had nothing concrete at that time, so I says, hey, let me see what you come up with and we'll consider it. And um, fast forward to the next week, um, Monday, uh, this past Monday, um, um, we were on the floor because we were in the last week of session. So we were going late every night. Uh, by the time I got a notice from my chief of staff and ledge director around five o'clock, they said, we have the amendments. And they're saying, I'm recommending you not take the amendments. And uh, that was our position. We felt uh, the amendments kind of like watered down the bill and, and created a study. So we said no to those amendments. And I think that's pretty much what got us here today. Because again, but no time that the governor or anyone in his administration say we we're going to veto the bill. So the fear of a veto, I believe, uh, caused members to say, let's hold the bills. Okay, so here's what I don't understand. Okay, so um, kind of long story, the long end of it here is um, <coughs> they fought, they created a bill. Um, very very long uh, i think it was like over a it was over a thousand pages um uh, 1100 pages if i recall correctly uh and it was broken down into 14 uh you know uh, 14 huh is that amendments right yeah 14 amendments mm -hmm. and um it was it looked good nobody had a problem for the most part and then uh apparently sometime down like sometime uh earlier like i think about a week earlier um there was a uh, brother who was approached that hey, like there's some problems. There could be some problems in this uh, in this here bill. Let's uh, let's make some changes to these amendments. And as you just say, like these changes would have like severely watered down. It had been, um, it it would not have been what they were asking for. It had been something that's like you know cheap and something that can like hey, you know they'll feel better if this. That's not what they was asked for. These people asked for reparations for slavery, amongst other things that could better put, not just better put black people in a, in a position, but it will actually right the wrongs of yesteryear. And so that we can, so uh, we'll, be, we'll be able to um, build from what we should have had this entire time, or what we should have had the entire time. It's like this is an entitlement more so than it is uh, a, 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 restorative, a restorative effort. Um, so... I personally don't think it would have been not safe. I personally don't think it'd have been fair for uh, for us to receive something like low, like a bunch of low hanging fruit type type uh, type changes and like or type reparations. I think we should be good. And I think we should get everything that's that's owed to us. But like I'm gonna ask you this, um, just just like just how far are you willing to go to actually get like actually get something. Because these people saying, "Hey, it's either this or nothing." These little these amendments, they like how is that? And we don't know what they look like. Don't yeah. get me wrong, we don't know what what that what those changes were because it's not it's not. I don't think it's uh, documented anywhere. But um, what those changes uh, what those changes like? I don't know how I don't, I don't know how to really put this. Should we just take a little bit of something uh, rather than what we actually entitled to? I mean, it depends on what, like, like you said, it depends on what they were trying to take out, right? If that little something was way better than what, you know what I'm saying, than nothing, out of ticket, but I, I don't know what he saw and what it was, you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So if, if, if it's that bad to say fuck it all together, 
then we gotta believe them. You know what I'm saying? That it was fucking all together. Yeah. Because we don't know what they took out and what they tried to water down and how bad that was. How do they determine how much reparations we are owed? Oh, that's uh, so that's what that also was part of that uh, yeah. eleven thousand page uh, <laughs> page bill. You know, what it's I'm like you do the inflation on the dollar and how much money raised. That's part of it, yeah. Yeah, like because they were supposed to get so many hundreds of dollars back then. You times that by the debt owed by hundreds of years. I'm not like because they never gave it to you. Just like yeah. a bank, if you're not paying something like with your student loans, say yeah, I take out four thousand, but since I never gave you no money for the whole time I, you know, I had the loan, that bill would get up to about two hundred thousand from four thousand. <sighs> you see what I'm saying? Just from four. You see what I'm saying? So you got to add that with hundreds of years of debt and then inflation of the dollar and other things that was promised into money because you was also promised land. So if you're not giving me the land, you have to compensate me in money. Okay. So it it would be that's why they they know when they crunch the numbers. That's why they like that's a lot of fucking money. Well, if they print money. Why not just print it out and no, give it to them? Because you, if you, the more money you print, decreases the value of your dollar. That's the problem. It's it's estimated. It's estimated like thirty about thirty thousand. Tr- thirty. I get thirty. My yeah, thirty, 30 trillion, trillion dollars. That's yeah. a lot of money to print. Damn. So yeah. if you print, say say we print thirty trillion dollars, right? That will fuck up our whole economy. You see what I'm saying? Because that money technically. It's not really worth nothing. <laughs> so what? What in your opinion? Well, hold on, it's not even just that either. But not only would it, not only would a it kind of be ruined, but we will be the blame for it. I yeah, mean, everybody will be, be, we'll be considered as the blame so, for yeah, it. Not only that, it. but everybody will be in. Uh, everybody will be like, I mean, broke as fuck. And then we the ones that's like, what the rich what as the, fuck? Yeah, and then we gonna have targets on our back. Yeah, because you know everybody to hate you. So yeah. what in your opinion would be a. a <laughs> reasonable repertoire compensation for black people that's won't damage the economy but will ensure that we are um well compensated for our, our blood always, sweat and tears and jay i always say uh shit free college it's just 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 education i mean health care that should take care of health care but i mean at least Take care of college and um, take care of the kids' t- college tuition. So, uh, as let's say there was actual documented proof of everyone's lineage, that kid should be allowed free college at any university in the states and complete free health care. I mean, shit. I wouldn't say access. I mean, depends on what their GPA is. Like, I mean, you don't just give a F student. A key, yeah, a key to go to Harvard, you still gotta, you know, gotta work for that. You still be worthy to go. Oh, ahead. oh it right, just, right. Just well, hypothetically, they, just they have the grades. Yeah, they yeah. just be so free. any college they want. Yeah, they, yeah, if be they have the grades. Yeah. So what's what's? Oh, I got a question too. So I want if you if I know you like to do combo questions and stuff like that. But <laughs> I, I do got another question. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So so what about for the people? That, what about for the kids that are not, um, you know, doing good in school? Because I mean, you gotta understand. Like this is, it's not just like the money. The uh, what happened to us Real economically system. doesn't just affect you know our pockets. It also affects our culture, our mentality, uh, mm-hmm. the education of our forefathers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like all that stuff trickles down to the current generation. And it just so happens that a lot of people, a lot of kids, uh, just aren't smart, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, partially do not all the way. Don't get me wrong. And I am a part of. I do believe everybody can make their own decisions for themselves despite their circumstances. But at the same time, you got to understand that like there's a, uh, the pathology is, um, if a, if a person, how do I put this? Uh, if, if somebody is born, uh, out of almost, if, if somebody was born with almost nothing, he has limited amount of, uh, uh, options as opposed to somebody that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They got all the options in the world. Mm-hmm. So with somebody, uh, with somebody who has a, you know, uh, some great grandparents that was uneducated because they was, they weren't able to, uh, be educated, which, uh, created a situation with the parents that, you know, uh, probably had some kind of other toxic traits, which created their parents that, you know, mom probably, mom probably got, you know, mental issues and then dad didn't want to stick around and stuff like that. And, um, so it leaves us with this one child that, uh, it's not just, he's not just uneducated, right? It's not, he's not that he's just dumb. He also is going through like a lot of trauma, you know what I'm saying? Mental trauma, because I mean, he's in the hood with a, with an angry, you know, bitter single mother and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he can't, he can't just, he can't just focus on his, on his studies. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, for everybody that's out there, it's like, oh man, these white, black people are just dumb. No, there's a lot of trauma that comes along with of being course. black as well, and the and a lot of our uh, situations. So like, so yeah, going back to you know to the question, what do you do with that child that's not doing well in school? Uh, do you just don't so he doesn't he doesn't get reparations at all, or what do you think? I feel like there should be plans put in place for that, but also to take care of the issue as a whole. I feel like they should invest in, like, um, counseling, mental health class, um, mental health, stuff to teach mental education, financial literacy in inner city schools to teach kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you may not be, college may not be for you, but you can learn a trade. Yeah. It's always, it's a class for everything in here to learn how to make money in some way, shape, or form. So, I mean, college may not be for you. You know what I'm saying? It's not for everybody, but there is something that you can learn to make money and get and get you a decent living. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just not knowing nothing and just bouncing around from say like restaurant jobs, fast food chains, or scraping the bottom of the barrel. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 too many ways out here. You know what they could do? Well, hold on, real quick, before oh, you go change go. before you change six subjects. Uh, I think part of that trade thing you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that needs to also be talked about is. Uh, the fair employment, you know what I'm saying, amongst yeah. like these type of corporations. It's like a lot of there's quite a bit of people saying um they're being locked out of these programs because of the color of their skin. Like we had uh like David from like a couple months back. Uh he said that some like a lot of black Americans just didn't have access to those union jobs because union jobs did not accept black people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And there's things and I mean I, there's um there's uh i think i don't know if it's california but yeah black people are like um are pretty angry with like the way that hispanic businesses have been hiring it's like that they you know i mean you you kind of know how it goes they hire uh they first they're they hire their own people first a lot of the time and uh they're like i said there's black people that's kind of just been calling that out you know what i'm saying throughout the country mm-hmm. so um i think that'd be i need i think i need uh, i think uh, if we're going to be offering these type of different programs uh, to these black people in this, you know, hypothetical situation of reparations, uh, we, there needs to be some kind of groundwork laid out for, uh, um, you know, the discrimination that's had, the discriminatory uh, employment practices and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's true. You got something to say. So, what if they do, cause I know it said like, what, $30 trillion? I couldn't even, I don't even know how many zeros that is. Um, what did they do? Free college, free health care, and a thousand dollars a week untaxed. Because even a thousand dollars a week, and I already did the math, is forty-one point fifty-seven million people, black people in the United States. For how long? I, I guess what. Till the till the money is till the money's exhausted. Till the money's exhausted. <laughs> and then the country will be in economic ruin. You know what I'm talking about. No. I mean a thousand dollars a week? A thousand dollars a week. Yeah, every black, I mean every black person spent, you know, there's a send to say that's oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be used to getting that shit. I mean shit. every black person does the send to say will get that money. I mean, I, like you understand, that, that would go to your children too, Rob. It wouldn't just go to you. Right, right. But even think, but you can imagine a thousand dollars a week. If your kids are getting a thousand dollars a week and they still kids, they can't do nothing with the money. That's setting them up for success. And you a thousand dollars a week for anybody. Yeah, I mean Untaxed yeah. will definitely set you up. No matter where you fucking working. True. I mean, that's cool. But what happens if I die? I need to take my cut. I mean, then your cut you your cut go to other black people. What the fuck? No, 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 no. <laughs> I need my people. cut to go to my family. Regardless. They got their own thousands. This is, this is why we gotta put they, they still need my end. This is why we gotta make we got to normalize right but now. No, I, w- I would say this, though. The, the free health care, the free education, that's just cool. Black people always already tried to emulate that, t- that type of shit anyway. And you got it on the back end in a different type of ways with uh, public aid and things of that nature. I don't want that shit. I want my money and I want the land for cheap. Okay? And I don't want to be taxed for 400 years. As long as you cut my niggas in chains, that's how long I want to be tax free. I don't want to pay no taxes. I want my land and I want my change. That's it. 
I, you, I don't want nobody to tell me what I want to do with it. But I mean, I think most people be fine with thousand dollars a week for the rest of your life. I feel like for the for people the rest who, of your life. No, I feel like for the people who are for the like, rest of my life, they go. That's the that's that, that for, that's gonna really piss me off. Untaxed. Look, that's look, for you. I'm saying though, you know how many people <clears throat> that you actually probably gonna give out more money than that trillion, right? Because it's not a trillion. It only that, came out that, to that, um, that, uh, um for, forty-one billion five hundred seventy-two million. And that's if you get that, to, but, but how many spend of, of a lifetime? Did you calculate the lifetime of, of 70, 80 years? And, Man, nobody gonna make it that long. No, yeah, that's the point. No, you have to calculate these things. You, <laughs> nobody, you have to have an estimate. That that's, you're not even doing all the math that you need to do to come with a true answer. Right, but we, but that's but that's what the initial number now. You count the number of deaths in terms of old people, the life expectancy of black people, in two different demographics. We talk about the old and the young. Most of the money not even have a chance to get paid out for too long. I mean, it probably will, bro. Cause it, look, okay, so let's give it. Let's say we give it the average person. Let's say seventy. Let's say seventy-five. The average lifespan for all the black people seventy-five. Then that's including your children. That's including you and seventy-five. And that, that's a lot. That's a lot of life. That's a lot of money given to you. Say I think it's thirty-four million black people. That's a lot of. That's a lot of money, and you do that times seventy-five. And then that's you got still, that's, that's that's seventy-five th- years, but you got to do it in weeks. So you gotta do 70, uh, 75 years times the week uh, in the money. That's how you get your answer. That still don't even touch a trillion. No, yes, it does. You lied to me, but uh, that still that still won't even touch a trillion. You sure? You know how many billions to make a trillion? I mean, I know this this do not even. They better be go, They better come close to a quarter trillion. Then, then, then there's not enough. Then so man, I gotta make it five thousand. <laughs> I've heard Yvette Curran. I've heard certain people say it needs to be like a, uh, a like a down payment, like a um, what do you call it? I think we just a down payment. And it doesn't even be like a down. Pay- it needs to be like a uh, like a like a down payment, like a one time payment of like all of this money all at once. And I, it's like, listen, bro. We there's a couple ways of looking at this. Okay, uh, it depends on like your standpoint regarding okay uh, your affinity, your love for this country, stuff like that. Some people want to see this nation stay up because we like this low key is our land. A lot of people, a lot of us believe that uh, we didn't come from Africa. We actually been in America this entire time or whatever. Uh, or you want to just say, OK, or you reject that to say that, no, we are from Africa. Let's all return to Africa. Like whatever. You know what I'm saying? My, my position is like, look, we don't want this country to like. We don't want this country to fall apart before we even able to spend the damn money. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna have to. It's gonna have to be some sort of a staggered payment in order for us to, uh, in order for us all to be able to, uh, not just receive the money, but also build, uh, build with the money. You know, uh, I don't know how much that's gonna be a month or a week or a second or anything like that. Um, I do, um, I do think it's, but I do think it's gonna be required for us to uh, even uh, get the full, get the full thing to begin with. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's still like. It's still kind of scary to think about because knowing how much debt this country is in, like it's like the debt is so high that it's almost like it's almost it almost it almost seems like it doesn't exist. That, that's what I'm saying though, right? We watch the debt get higher with everything we do, but when it comes to us, right? We supposed to worry about the debt ceiling, but, but they don't worry about it when it comes to everybody else around this motherfucker. The way I rather think of it is, let's just stop meddling in foreign affairs and just focus more on I mean yeah I, I get that right but that's not what that's never going to be America's plan because that's how they control the world by meddling in foreign affairs nice so <laughs> we would never that's a that's our business we always going to be in that business I think okay so, I need to, maybe I should stop like pussyfoot and, like stop let's stop putting money in directly oh, never mind I don't want to talk about it no more yeah. <laughs> that's how we take over niggas economies this is how we do business this is how we do these things we do so yeah this, let's stop let's please stop giving money to stop giving money away uh so anyway, let's continue on this video before I get in trouble. And so, first of all, when, when did you first put the bill together? Uh, I introduced the bill. I did a gut in a man last year. Um, uh, and um, when, 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 when last year? Uh, I think like July. Of okay. Last year. So, so you, you mean to tell me, so from July 2023, the other members of the Black Caucus until August of 2024, they didn't say nothing about the bill until right before it's mm-hmm. going to hit the floor to get passed. They mentioned some concerns about the bill at the first part of this year. But at, again, in May, they all signed on as joint co-authors of the bill. 
And the language hasn't changed from the time. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. They signed on as joint co-authors of the bill in May. The language hasn't changed. And now all of a sudden in August, hold up, we got some issues. Yeah, it's the same bill. Manager, he's talking about the Congressional Black Caucus. He's not talking about like, oh, everybody and oh, like okay. all these, you know, no, he's talking about like, like members of the Black Caucus. That's a part of this uh, reparations bill or that's, uh, that's going to make a decision on passing the bill over to Gavin Newsom to make a final decision on. So, Because I didn't take the amendments. I can understand if I had taken amendments, but I guess you're saying they weren't aware of the uh, amendments. We weren't aware of the amendments till, like I say, after five o'clock on Monday of this final, final week. For everybody, for anybody that could be confused, when he says amendments, he's talking about like the changes that was, um, that, that was, um, prescribed right yeah, the changes yeah. they were deciding they were deciding to make to make the bill more passable for gavin newsom and the you know democratic party in in california so let's keep going and once we had a chance to digest them and look at them as my staff would do we sent them out the next day or the day after to every member of the black caucus we sent those amendments out and sh showed where we had concerns with them so I i'll go back to their statement in its current form one of the primary concerns with the bill is that it ceded legislative oversight authority, which is critical given the generational impact this legislation would have. What are they, what are they talking about? Seeing that it would take away uh, legislative insider input and in, and in, and in, in deciding what reparations would be or the task force or having to. That's not the case because, again, this is the bill. It hasn't changed that they agreed to be co-authors on. So if it exceeded it today, it's ex exceeded it then when they signed on to the bill. The language has not changed. The I language has not changed. Read the whole bill. There's a lot of pages. That's what I feel like. They read like, okay, we cool with it. Then they say, hold on. Hold on. I ain't see that shit right there. <laughs> I ain't agreeing with that shit either. We ain't calling that man back. Yeah. Hey, we ain't fucking with it no more. And the thing is, uh, I think... A lot of the things that they seen might have something to do. I'm sorry. A lot of the things that they've seen that they didn't like might have something to do with the people that's backing them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, like you said, they would lose their seat and to argue anything in the future about what they want. That right there, that is a problem. Why would oh, yeah, I be course. okay with losing my spot? And, yeah. and I have no more input on the task force or how things to be done. So that so once this go through, they're gonna leave it up to the white men to do whatever the fuck they feel like they want to do, and you won't have no input to say anything anymore because you signed that shit away. Yeah, I mean, but you gotta let's think about what like caused them to have to have to second guess because like you because imagine these are just representatives of like you know mm -hmm. uh, different uh, whatever they're whomever they're representing, and uh, I'm just saying uh, for this to be something that's like for black people. What would like what would what would be the what would be the thing that would stop that black person from uh, agreeing to any of the any because like I said we have to understand that these were items that that were that uh that degraded the the strength of this of this reparations package of, of the bill so we have to understand that it wasn't something that would could strengthen black people is something that should, that's supposed to be taken away from uh from black people and you know in reference to this bill. So I mean, so my question is like, fellas, I mean, that's what he said, but what, but what, what they implied was they would lose their seat. So technically, no. okay. Great. I mean, I'm saying though, he's saying what uh, the the amendments that they wanted to put in there would have degraded the bill, but we don't know their amendments. But what was in the bill was saying that they will remove. Uh, they will lose their seat and uh, they will lose their voice. No, no, no. The, uh, but the uh, reason they would lose the voice is because it would have been, it'd have been a, a, a decision they would have to make that could have uh, crossed, um, crossed the, uh, 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 the agenda. That would have crossed the agenda of somebody else they could be representing. Because, again, they're all just representing different people. Now, if they, yeah, if they would have lost their seat, that's because uh, people would have been actually choose, chosen to vote them out because of uh, over some things that they didn't uh, over that uh, over the decision over that bill. Okay. Whereas all the black people would have been supportive of them because right now with them not passing this bill, all the black people making these TikToks, they making these IG posts, they make they they're all over social media saying these people are our enemies. These black people are our enemies. So let's not vote for them. So according to these guys, they're like okay, um, they rather make that they rather. Um, 
take that chance with the black people, right? Um, as opposed to taking a chance against the other people they're supposed to be representing. Gotcha. Okay. The, like so, that's how. At least that's how I. That's how I get it. So, um, so I think the question I was asking was, what do you think? Could well, I mean, I guess we. There's no way for us to like kind of know, right? So, just leave it at that. And we were true to that. I've been an honest broker from all 25 years of my elected officials life. 20, uh, 14 in the uh, legislature and I don't hide the ball and uh, I show up every day and I do the work and my bill had not changed again I stood firm I mean the to get out of appropriations assembly appropriations and senate appropriations with no amendments on it you know stated that it had a lot of support and then all of a sudden they're claiming so now they're saying oh no no we're gonna we're gonna make this happen uh in the next session really yeah, uh, well, I'll be gone, but you know. And you'll be gone because uh, you, what term expires? I'm termed out in December. Uh, it has to be absolutely um, devastating, gutting. I mean, I don't want to, but it has to be really disappointing for you to, to to be right there on the one yard line and having the votes lined up, and the Black Caucus back out at the last second because of the threat of a veto from the governor, which you never heard directly. Yep, so like I said, it, it all boiled down to them. Oh man, um, Gavin Newsom, well at least the, how, the, how their story goes is they didn't wanna, they stopped all progress on that bill. They didn't want it, they didn't want it voted on off the possibility that Gavin Newsom was gonna, wasn't gonna agree to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm asking you all this: uh, Is it was that a, was that the right call? Do y'all think it's the right thing to do to pull uh, pull some sort of like potential legislation because you think the governor is gonna just veto it? I mean, you still, I mean, you still gotta shoot your shot, right? Yeah, why, why the fuck? I mean, mind you, you can always come back. Back, like, yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, and, yeah. and with a ratified yeah. or like a change. Yeah. You what do you mean? I gotta shoot my shot. We don't know if it hit. If we don't shoot, what are we talking about? Yeah, I mean, even if you fail again, if, yeah. if, 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 even if you fail, you can try. You can try again. Like it's not that. Yeah. It's not like a one. It's not like a video game where you only get one life. If you feel right, it, you can. So because yeah. could, could that's how that mess go anyway. You know how many bills don't get passed, and they yeah. just try again. They try again again. another term, and so they yeah they didn't want to try. And so I'm thinking, what what do you think? What do you think? The thought process is what do you think the hidden agenda is. You feel me? Because I think it could be something political. I believe because the election right now, Kamala from California, certain thing they don't want to approve something. They like well, it's just you know she. They believe Kamala Harris takes on the California approach to everything. So if they do that, they like well, this is the type of shit she may do for us in the future. You know what I'm saying? So they be like that makes her look bad when you want votes from the other side. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I say you push it back and you wait till the election is done and then you. You hash the problem out. That's yeah. probably why. Hypothetically, what do you think the opinion of Trump would be if he were to win this <laughs> election and give niggas a give niggas plan. reparations? Yes, they will shoot him. Damn! Oh, they'll shoot him. They'll shoot him. White people <laughs> kill him. They say you betrayed us. Oh, man. <laughs> we put you there. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah, they. I, I definitely heard some. I definitely watched some videos. Some uh, some crazy like uh, racist dude. Um, complaining of that Donald Trump it, during his uh, during his uh, his term actually betrayed white people. Mona, I don't like any president we've had in my lifetime. You don't like Trump? No, fuck. So I'm not I'm not like low key like dripping at all. <laughs> he didn't pardon the uh, January 6th people that were his people, but he did pardon a lot of rich people. He did pardon Kodak Black, and Kodak Black do be putting on for Broward. I don't like a traitor. Who was he did, yeah. He said when he was talking about the migrants, they was upset. No, no, I'm, I'm not. No, during the, during his four years as oh. president, he, he oh, betrayed white people. And I don't even know what that dude even talking I don't even know what he's even talking about mm -hmm. because, yeah, that's what he says. That, I mean, it, I, mind you, this was like a backwoods of Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> oh God, God. So, he yeah. Us. But that's, that's right, what that's but mind you, mind you, did he, that's not him. It, like, this is one of them towns. It was like, it was on the sundown towns down in the south. Yeah. So, and they literally have a church that's like dedicated to like, uh, you know, uh, you know, white empowerment and stuff like that. So it's not this. This thought didn't come spe specifically from him. It, there, there's a community down there that believes that Trump 
uh, betrayed. Well, yeah, they they betrayed him. So, uh, uh, so if they think if they think Trump dis uh, disaffected him during that time, yeah, him him giving black people reparations or even the platinum plan, it, yeah, they uh, yeah they would have came for his head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I think that's I'd argue that's a big reason why we don't hear Trump uh, talking about this uh, platinum plan anymore. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but yeah, so uh, any other thoughts regarding? Uh, but yeah, so like yeah, y'all so think that's kind of what the whole deal is behind? Uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it this way. What I what I kind of believe is, um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely some political. And I mean, I guess anybody's guess, obviously. But um, I don't. I wouldn't say it's. I don't know. It, I, I almost want to say that okay. Put it. Let, let, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it this way. Like there was a a package that was uh put together by the House, a rep. I believe it was the House of Representatives that was about, that was supposed to uh handle this migrant situation, handle the uh the border uh the border crisis, and um and uh, Kamala Harris was ready was willing to sign it into law, but Donald Trump came in and said no. Uh you know don't uh don't pass it. Uh, I'm gonna run on it. You know what I'm saying, and that's what. Well, you know what they didn't. I, that's what likely is had. That was likely was the reason by him. That was likely the reason why he uh, decided, you know, to tell the, you know, the the house to, you know, not pass anything like that. So you know, to cut to cut it, um, or to vote against it. And um, but again, it's another one of the things where he didn't necessarily say, necessarily say that, but it's like I would argue it's like heavily implied. Because what other reason would he want to uh, run that? Uh, uh, what else? What other reason would he cut something like um, uh, further uh, border control, border patrol, uh, border control rather? Um, but yeah, he did it because he wanted to run on that. He wanted that to be a part of his, a part of like the his campaign. Yeah, part of his campaign. And like the only thing I can really think of the why that would be important is to. Is that it would be like a, the Republicans that make this happen instead of like Kamala Harris? Cause Kamala Kamala Harris likely would have took the uh, took the uh, the, credit. the credit for it. Yeah, thank you. But um, but it's uh, I guess it's something that Donald Trump wanted to take the credit for. And this is unfortunate. It became it became a game of blue versus red instead of blue and red versus the problem. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I kind of like using that as like my uh, my you know my kind of. Uh, as my uh uh geez i'm losing my words right now like using that as my frame of reference i mean maybe this could be another one of those things where uh somebody uh maybe somebody else wants to run on this uh run this reparations package or maybe they want it done in some other way uh or or what i would probably argue that gavin newsom knows that he's not going to pass it into law so he wants to he made some thing he made some phone calls and um and that what that's what got these that's what implored these uh black members these uh these uh state representatives these uh house representatives of of, of the california you know uh, state and like you know uh, representatives of california to vote against you know what i'm saying this or not even vote against it but to postpone its implementation into as a uh, into uh, into congress or to uh, you know the the california chain of you know uh building bill creation you know what i'm saying um, so that's kind of what that's kind of at least my guess is. It could be obviously again, it could be anything. But as far as like if I if my if somebody would have put a, a gun in my head, say, hey, what do you think? Why do you think Gavin Newsom? Uh, I'm gonna say, why do you think the Black Congressional Black Caucus don't want to pass this uh, uh, this legislation or don't want to even vote on this legislation? I'm saying, well, I think Gavin Newsom had a had a huge deal to do with it. But uh, so what? So amongst the people in California, they need to make that decision on what they want to do with Gavin Newsom and uh, the Congressional Black Caucus. But I'll tell you right now, um, black people uh, are very angry about um, about those about those members. And uh, if black people got them in there, I mean, low key, they, there's going to be black people that's going to get them out. So anybody, any, any uh, statements of anybody else? What y'all kind of think? Do you think it'd be reasonable to take the the reparations and in its totality and maybe divide it and do it state by state so it would be like one year they'll do california and then another year or year and a half they'll do illinois <coughs> and what the case they be huh 
I would say I did think about something similar. I I don't know. I asked one of my homeboys like, "What do you think? What do you think of the the California Task Force for Reparations?" I asked them, "Do you think it's smart for every every state to pull together uh, a group of, a group of like minded individuals to fight for like reparations in, in their own state?" And he he said it was a good idea, and I'm gonna go ahead and agree with him to say that uh, I do believe that every state should. Um, I think I think it I think it will be a good uh, idea for as many states to as many states as possible to fight for uh, reparations if we, if it can be passed federally. Now, with that said, my I would say we all should be doing it at the same time because like what happened in California, like it was something that was started that was yeah, that was started um, by uh, a group of people. Like uh, I think I'm pretty sure it was a grassroots uh, push to uh, put something together, put a bill together, and then uh, vote the right people in. And or at least take advantage of the people that are voted in, right? And um, and uh, get you know get this thing get this thing going, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it should be something that should be done one by one, as you asked. I think it's something that we all should be collectively fighting for at the exact same time. Um, what well, so, I was yeah. saying next, I think it. I'm exactly what you think about financially be reasonable because oh, financially. You be said like thirty trillion, and if you take thirty trillion and divide that by forty one point fifty seven million and then take that and divide that by fifty states to get a, a surmountable amount of money per state. So let me ask you this question real quick, just so I understand the question better. Is this like is this going towards a federal push, like a a, a nationwide push for reparations? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I said I understand. I'm okay, I'm thinking you still you still talking about like a state by state thing. Okay. Um Man, uh, damn, that's like I don't know if it, I don't know if I don't know if it works like that. I think if it's if anything, because it's gonna be done on a federal level, it has to be done. Yeah, it goes out globally, goes across the board. Yeah, it has to be but, done uh, in, in, in D.C. I mean, technically, Rob, thirty trillion ain't really nothing, right? If you ever sit there and watch the House of Representatives when they all come together and they talk about spending money, they throw thirty to twenty trillions around like it's fucking candy. So you know they they. What spend, about the case then? Why make the point that it will ruin us economically? Because they, because that? that's what they tell us if they get that shit to us. But they can spend thirty trillion on the military and it's all fine and dandy. But it may be maybe because they be talking about this over a course of time, maybe then just you know. One it's always while. over a course of time. Yeah, so it's probably that's probably what it is over but, a course so of then, time. So then, that's what I'm, that's what I'm proposing. But see, they can they can do I that mean, within a course of time if they time. if they average out the amount of money that's that should be I guess given. Divide that by the number of black people that are in the United States, and then divide that by fifty states, and then I mean, California get this though. amount, and then whatever time, so to say, get this amount, and whatever time, over time they'll they'll meet the trillion million mark, and why still giving reparations to people that deserve it? I mean, I'm just saying that's fifty years. I mean, and then it's like you know you you're doing it in a turn based thing, so you have to you have to wait. Just imagine being the fifty year state nigga. That sucks <laughs> for you. <laughs> I cannot argue that. <laughs> I would like to. I would like to think they would get the big states out the way first. The ones that that's heavy. I mean, uh, I, I don't think you have to even do fifty states because I don't think the population of black people even migrated to all fifty like that. To a certain extent, I don't think you know black people are really spread out that you know that far. I think black people are in every state. It's black people. It is, is in every state. It depends where you're looking. But I mean, if it's states. just a hundred. But but, but, years but, some, but some of the more predominantly white states like Utah and uh, Wyoming, there's not that many. But you can find areas. That's what I'm saying. You need to leave that state so you get your money. If you want, because <laughs> it's gonna take a while to get there. What you oh, say? Well, yeah, wow. Uh, well, yeah, that depends out there. They say, mm -hmm. hey, no, you got, you can't just come over here. You got to actually have some citizens. You have to have your birthright. And, yeah, uh, and all that stuff like that. Yeah, but so do you dig it? Or oh, oh. well, maybe like five sticks a year? Maybe something like that. Maybe you have to make it a little faster. Yeah, but now nah, waiting fifty years, being at fifty, <laughs> that's tough. Be like you in Illinois, you will be the fiftieth state, but both will be this bitch bad. <laughs> <laughs> My cut, I'm gonna be dead, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's yeah, crazy. So, yeah, we can, but yeah, that's um, yeah, that was Roland Martin. So you know, appreciate Roland Martin for sharing the wealth here. Uh, not, but uh, if if you want to if you want to hear more about uh this interview with uh Stephen Bradford, uh, please go to Roland Martin's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, check it all out. He uh, my Roland Martin does definitely do good work. There's a lot of 
you know, there's a lot of, you know, our, you know, a lot of chatter about Roland Martin and all that stuff as a person. But, you know, again, he still does good work. He has he gets a lot of interesting guests and stuff like that on to help talk with him and stuff like that. And um he um he does he relatively normally has the right opinion. So um Yeah, I know I know. I, <laughs> but uh otherwise, yeah, man, it's been a Shark Black Delation podcast and we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>